welcome to this week's piece. Now, this is not something I would typically pick up. Perhaps if there were two of them, I might consider it because you guys know I love matching nightstand sets. But this piece, the whole top of it is MDF, which I'm not a fan of. And you can see there's already some kind of roughed up edges on it. The drawers still slide great. Everything works. Um, the inner structural parts of it are wood, so that's great. But for this, I'm going to be making a mini bench. So I get this picture sent to me left and right on Facebook and it cracks me up every time because I have no reason to make one of these. The amount of um, effort that's put into it versus what I would get back for it in resale isn't great. However, I have a bunch of new babies in my family and one of them is going to be getting this. So that's where we're at with this. So quickly, I'm just evaluating everything and figuring out how I want to go about this. Obviously, I'm going to have to remove the top. Now, if the top was wood, I would have kept the top to use for this portion of it because you can use it to be the lower part of the bench and also be the trim around the top. But since this is MDF, I don't want to use it for that. And we're going to take this off. Maybe I'll find another use for it later, but as of right now, it's not gonna be used for this project. This was very easy to remove. It just had a few screws in and some glue. So I'm gonna kind of try and separate everything out. I did have to use a sledgehammer for part of the wood that was glued in, which is fine because I didn't need that piece either. And then this track that is in the bottom, if you ever find yourself needing to remove one of these, save it. You will need it for a future project. I guarantee it. I can't tell you how many of these I've actually had to purchase. So anytime I have like drawer pieces, I always save them. I try and save anything that comes off of a piece because you just never know when you can use it on an, another project. So quickly, I'm just going to cut the wood braces at the level that I need the bench. And that's just so that I can remove them, get them out, and it'll just make for a cleaner seat right there. I'm not going all the way through. I obviously want to have a frame and structural wood right there, but for the just inner parts, I don't need those. So I'm just cutting that just to the outer part of the frame. And you'll see these little wood strips just pop right up. Obviously this could be different from nightstand to nightstand or dresser to dresser, whatever you're doing it on. So you just kind of have to evaluate what you have. Now that we have the top off, there was quite a bit of glue residue left around the edges there. So I'm just taking my sander. I have about 80 grit on here. I needed it to be pretty strong because the glue was just, it was full of the MDF fibers and still fully stuck to the wood. So I'm just trying to get that off. Give me a smooth, glueable surface so that I can then put my trim on here. For the trim, I literally went to Home Depot and picked out a trim that was the right size and one that I kind of liked the shape to, to mimic the other pieces on the little nightstand here. So I'm taking measurements. I also got just a thin plywood board to use as the cushions because the whole top section is going to be cushioned, the bottom, the back, and both sides. So I'm taking all the measurements that I need. and then getting this thing all, all my pieces cut out. Okay, real quick for this part, I'm taking the measurements and then I'm going to shrink it a quarter inch just to give me some wiggle room with the foam and fabric.
To start, I am just doing the bottom and the back because they will be the same width and I can get them in first. As you can see, I'm labeling bottom on the one board and I'll label the upper back on the other just so that I know which one is which. Things kind of get messy sometimes and I just find that I do better off when I label things. But I will wait to do the sides until I get those installed. Not installed, but until I get them on there so I know the measurements will change once everything is padded and done. So I want to make sure I get these ones in. They're fitting nicely and then I can work on the others. I'm just cutting these out with my jigsaw because I had already had it out. Um, if you do not have a steady hand, I probably wouldn't recommend this because it's hard to do a straight line unless you wanted to use a guide with it. But you can also use a table saw and that will give you a really, really straight line. So while I was out at Home Depot, I also had to get fabric and the foam for the cushions. So I just picked up this poly foam. Um, it's super easy to work with it's just in a big sheet i got extra because it's expensive and i like to have it extra on hand and you get obviously a better price if you buy more of it so that's why there's a whole roll i can probably do two other projects with this which is nice um, for the bottom cushion i'm actually going to be doubling it up i don't want to fold it because it won't be shaped right, so I actually cut it into two separate things, but I am using two sheets for the bottom just to give extra cushion. And then all the other cushions will just have one piece on it. I cut it a little bit wider than the board because I want it to go around the edges so the edges are soft as well. But of course, this is not the most professional way to cover something. There's batting and all kinds of other things that you should be using if you are going to be a professional and do this for something that is for sale. Um, that's not what this is. So anyways, back to this. The second piece I cut quite a bit smaller because I want it to go underneath. It's going to be inset and then the other one will go over the top and cover it. That way it'll give a nice shape to the cushion. This is just for, like I said, a quick put together I know it's going to last, but it's also for a tiny baby, so I'm not worried about it getting too, too tore up. And then I picked up this fabric. Also, this is from Hobby Lobby, same as the foam. Um, it matched her room, so that's why I picked this up. The fabric also goes quite a bit larger than the wood and the poly foam because I wanted to cover all of that. To attach this, typically you'll see me use um, staples. That's really the best route to go. But here I'm using the super strength, like industrial Gorilla Glue Sticks. Um, it adheres to everything and it actually worked really, really well because it kind of seeps into the fibers of the wood and into the fibers of the fabric. So it did join really well. I do recommend this. But again, I would not recommend this if you were going to sell this piece, just if you were kind of making it for your kid or somebody in your family. I just like making sure pieces that I sell are going to be, you know, lifetime. So here I'm just getting a fit. I'm not attaching or anything. I'm just kind of seeing how things go and figuring out where I'm gonna place everything and the side portions can now be figured because the cushions are on and I can see how big I need the side pieces to be. And they will of course get the same treatment as the other two pieces with the foam and fabric.
Moving on to the trim, I am cutting all of the joined areas at a 45. Um, just be careful when you take measurements on these because it can be a little bit tricky. Make sure you have enough just in case you mess up and cut the wrong size for one or more. But anyways, just because of the shape of these, they have to be cut on a 45 to join. Also, it's just a cleaner look, so I recommend doing that in general. But so I'm getting these all cut out and then I will place them on the bench around the top edge to give it a nice finished look. I attach them with glue and the pin nails. It'll just help them stay longer. The pin nails, I made sure that they sunk a little lower than the surface and that way I can fill them out with filler later on. This top back portion was just going to be a little bit too high. So as you can see, I just did a flush cut on it so I could attach the trim. If you're wondering, that is a coping saw. It's lovely, it's a great little saw. Um, I could have also used my pool saw. That one was just closer. As I said, I sunk my nails in just a little deep so that I could go through and fill them with filler. I let it harden up and then I'm actually just taking a chisel to scrape off the top and then I'll go through with the sander. This is um, PVC, so it has to be sanded first before I can paint or else the paint will struggle with adhering to the surface. So make sure you give this a good sand. I did it with my random orbital once I got these all cleaned up and then I also went back in and hand sanded the little ridges there because obviously the orbital can't fit in those. I just want to make sure that I have a really really nice surface for paint. Once I finish all my scuff sanding I pull out the fabric and kind of choose colors that I thought were complementary to it so I could start painting. All right so this is the color combination I started with. I thought it was going to be what I ended with but it's not because I feel like the orange is a little bit too strong. So instead of the orange I got out, I got out a dark khaki, which is what it sounds like, dark khaki. And I like this much better. It still has a little bit of the orange through it, but more of like a neutrally brown. So I think I like that more. And if I need to throw in a little orange in the mix of that to brighten it up, I can. But I think this goes better with the overall fabric instead of the bright on the other side. These are more muted and it was just a little too bright. So I think this is the route I'm taking. Okay, we'll start on the front. Now this blend was really fun. The colors aren't terribly close to each other, but they are all muted and, and kind of nice. And so they were easy to blend. So for the bottom, I'm just using a flat brush because I'm just laying it on. And it doesn't really matter. I'm just going up to the height that I want it. This is just the first coat. So if I want to change anything later, I totally can. Obviously because I did the orange on the one side and I wasn't a huge fan of it. So keep that in mind when you're doing your first coat. It doesn't ever have to be perfect. It can be something that you work off of. So I know that I like the, the color placements and the heights of things. So I'm just keeping that in mind as I'm doing the front, kind of matching it up to the sides. So the blue, I will go up a little higher than where I want it to finish. And then for the dark khaki, I can kind of get that up again I place it in the center portion and then I'll go down into the blue. And then the same with the pink on the top, the mauve color, I can go up a little higher and then so those colors can blend together. 
I take out the drawer just to get this trim and then I'll put the drawer back in to make sure that the blends match up. I just don't push the drawer in all the way so that I get the blend where it needs to be, but I can also not mess up the paint. And so I had the flat brush to do the blue. I've got my small round brush to kind of blend in the khaki. And I find that this is one of my favorite ways to do this because the small round, they're a little bit coarser bristled. They blend a little bit better for me. So I can lay paint on with this, but then also it's a really good blending brush. And for this, I'm trying to work this into the grain. The grain's a little bit deep on this piece, which is fine. So it helps push it in. And then also you'll see I'll use like swirling areas and I'll go back and forth and kind of just any which way to get the blend to look smooth and nice, that's what I do. Sometimes it varies from piece to piece depending on the type of blend I'm doing. This part was really easy to blend just because I'm working in such small areas like the pink didn't need much blending into because it was missing the whole top section but I'll show you an entire side once we go over the orange side. You'll see that whole thing come together. I'm never afraid of mixing my paint you can keep clean brushes if you want, if you don't ever want to muddy up your colors. I'm never worried about that. I just kind of do what I feel at the moment. Okay, I obviously was changing the hardware from this. It's just going to be too clunky, obviously. Um, I have this, which I like. It fits. I already had it on hand. Um, however, it just... This is not going to be a blingy piece, and I feel like this is too blingy. So I'm going to paint it into the piece. So it'll have to get blended on with this. And then I'll do a base coat first off and then do the final coat on with the final coat of this. So, you know, just gonna give it a coat so I can get everything while it's off the piece because it's easier. And then the final coloring will be done on the second coat. I hope that makes sense. This will then obviously get sealed. Um, to prep this, I used a degreaser on it, even though it's brand new right out of the package. I used a degreaser on it and I used a really fine grit sandpaper to help the paint adhere. All right. So here's the orange side with the second coat on that's going to tone it back. I'm gonna kind of speed through this because you saw me do the front, but it's essentially the same process. I use the blue going up higher, then the khaki going through the center to fade into the blue. I can work it down. And then same thing with the mauve on the top. You can kind of just watch what my brush does. I make sure the paint stays wet. On the first coat, I usually don't have to use too much water, but on the second coat, because the first coat is already there and it's kind of dry and absorbing in the new paint, you have to use a little bit more water on the second coat. Now, if your coat is not fully dry, you can risk pulling the colors back up, which you don't want to do. So make sure your first coat is fully dry before you try doing a second coat of blending. And you can see I'm going back and forth. I do swirls. I do all the things to make sure that my colors get blended out. And if I need to add more blue to it or more pink to it, I do that. I'm not afraid to just keep adding colors if I need to. I'm going to seal in this clear gloss bar urethane. 
I'm choosing this just because I, it was right next to me and I think a gloss is a really great thing to use on a kid's piece because it will make it easy cleaning. So now that that's all dry, I can kind of get the cushions in and kind of figure out the placement. I know that I'm going to have to kind of push things and force things into place because the cushions are brand new and they don't kind of fit into each other yet. They will over time. But for initially putting them in, I know that I'm going to be fighting with them a little bit and that's perfectly normal. Okay, so I've just cut out some blocks to help hold, give the pad stability because they're the same. I don't know if you can see that. Let's do it on the side. Okay, they're the same size as these ones out here, so it will give this back corner of the cushion because it wants to go in stability right there. And I'll do the same for the middle one because there's nothing for it to go against once it gets down here. And the same for the other side. Blocks there, there, and in the back. That way it'll keep everything level with this side because this is where the pad's going to get attached to here and here, 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 here. And then this will help give them something else to stick to here and here. All right, so there's a couple ways you can do this. I just wanted to show you how I'm going to do it because um, it's handy. So I'm not gonna be able to get a clamp obviously around this to this. If you have really deep clamps, you can do that. Um, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to flip around my clamp here. Sometimes you have to do a screw. This one has an easy release button and you can throw it on the other side. Like, locks in and now the clamp can kind of, it's like a stretcher, but I'm going to use it to hold either block up and clamp it into place while I'm waiting for it to dry. Okay, so there we go. The clamp's holding the blocks up. I can't show it because I had to be in the way. It will block the camera, but you can see. It's just pushing on both sides. All right, I got a little too carried away and I actually glued these guys in off camera, sorry. Um, yeah, so I just have it um, clamped up, drying while I'm waiting for the glue to adhere. Typically, I would do screws or something. I don't want it to show through and pin nails. I am just a little too worried because this board is so thin. Had I used a thicker board, it would have been fine. But because uh, baby's going to be sitting on this, a little, little tiny thing, um, I didn't want there to be any possibilities of those things poking or sticking out anywhere or anything. So I felt glue was kind of the best option for this in this scenario. Oh hi, Taryn and Lucas here with Elegant Upgrades and we've got our finished piece. Ta-da! Okay. So this was an incredibly darling piece that it has been showing up on Facebook for a while now. Um, I don't remember who does it or if there was anything on it. I just know that I get the picture sent to me anytime it pops up on Facebook by multiple people. They're like, oh, here, you can do this. And I'm like, I can, but do I need to? Is it necessary? Because it's not something that I would build and then just sell. 
However, my cousin just had a baby and she was like, I want this for her first birthday. And I'm like, well, if you send me a picture of her room, I will do that. So that's what I did. She sent me a picture and so it's themed on her room. Really, I do baby furniture, it's worth looking now. Um, but it is very cute and this whole design can be done because um, I actually did want to do one on one of the double dressers, the smaller ones, but you know where it has like the row of drawers here, row of drawers here, and on one side you can take out two drawers and have a drawer on the bottom and then still think and turn that part into a bench. I hope that makes sense. But I've wanted to do one of those for a while, I just haven't found the exact right size dresser. But I'm like, this is essentially the same concept um, as doing that, only obviously on a smaller scale, it's much easier on that one. I would do a little more heavier duty construction, obviously, because it'd be holding the whole weight, but this actually supports me just fine. It doesn't creak or anything. It's perfectly sturdy. Um, and I surprisingly fit into it, so it's it will last her a while. Obviously, Lucas is um, four. He's messy. I'm getting ready to go to wrestling practice. But, um, so it's still not quite, he's still a little short for it. And she's teeny tiny, so it will fit her for many, many years to come, which is very cool. Um, yeah, so anyways, I hope you guys like this. I hope you learned something. I am just so thankful for you all for being here, truly from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for all of your comments and everything. I've noticed a lot of new people in the comment section and I'm just, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on and just taking the time to watch my videos, let alone leave a comment. I think it is incredibly kind of you, so. Thanks again, and I will see you guys next week. Uh, pictures to follow. Some people have been upset that they can't see the thing at the end. It's because I do pictures at the end. You just watch it a few times.